Uh, good afternoon. My paper links in with the last paper in the previous session, which looked at the um, regional mapping of musical traditions and styles in Kazakhstan, and in particular uh, at the regional traditions of performance on the Kazakh two-string lute, uh, Dombra. But rather than exploring uh, the early historical origins of the uh, uh, Dombra styles, I shall focus on their modern history through the 20th century until today. Uh, in current historiography of Dombra performance, it is customary to think of the two styles, Tokpia and Cherpia, as ancient, time-honored, rooted in the music of the Turkic forebears of Kazakhs and reaching the zenith in the works of the acclaimed key masters from the 19th century, Kurman Ghazi and Tatimbir. Without trying to undermine the assumption of a long-term history of the regional styles, I'm going to suggest that uh, the way we're accustomed to think about regionalism in Dombra performance um, have in fact resulted from the process of canonizing Dombra repertoire as part of the creation of Kazakh national music culture in the 20th century and more recently. So in this paper, I'm going to trace evolving representations of the Dombra styles in performance practice and academic discourse in the light of current ideological agendas, as well as cultural and intellectual trends. And in doing this, I seek to disclose ways in which current perceptions of um, the East-West divide in Dombra performance have been shaped by ideologies and intellectual thought of the time. In particular, I'm interested in how this process of canonization contributed to representation of Sherpie as Tokpie's other in structural, expressive, and historical terms. Ethnographic accounts from the late 19th and early 20th century, the collections of the Russian ethnographer Alexander Zatayevich and recent studies point to the existence of a variety of local musical dialects among the Kazakhs on the eve of the formation of the Kazakh nation, uh, the state of Kazakhstan in the Soviet era. By the beginning of the 20th century, several identifiable musical zones had formed among the various Kazakh uh, clans uh, on the territory um, stretching from the Urals and the Caspian Sea in the west to the Altai mountain range in the east to uh, Semirechia uh, or Jetusu in the southeast. And uh, among them, uh, most distinctive musical zones were those of the northwestern region of Bukei Orda, um, the far, far west, yeah? the Madhastau Peninsula, the Aral Sea and the Sardaria region in the southwest, uh, the region of uh, Sararka or Arka in central and eastern Kazakhstan. Uh, Semirechia and Altai. Geographical proximity and interaction between different clans through travel and migration ensured musical contact and influences. Places remote from each other, on the other hand, differed more widely in musical terms. For example, there was a greater degree of musical contact between the regions of Arka and uh, Jetusu, Semirechia, and between the Sara, uh, Sardaria region and Western territories, then between the musical traditions of the Eastern and Central steppe regions uh, and those of the Far West, Boki Orda, which represented the geographical and political frontier of the Kazakh steppe. Um, illustrative in this respect is an anecdote about a journey uh, by a celebrated singer from Arka, Jusupeki Lebekov, to the Ural region in the early Soviet period to give performances within a state-supported tour. It is said that his performance of Arka songs and keys wasn't appreciated by the local audience. When he finished performing a song, the audience demanded, give us a Kazakh song. And after he had played a key, there was silence. And then someone asked, have you finished tuning the Dombra? So this shows how concepts of music and aesthetic notions um, in the west of Kazakhstan, or of what was uh, to become modern Kazakhstan, 
differed from those of the central and eastern regions of the steppe. And uh, just to give you an idea of the sound of um, uh, the western Tokiki, I'm going to play a short fragment of a cue by the famous key master from the Bukiarada, Koman Gaza. It's called Adai, uh, which is a name of um, one of the prominent clans in the western region. So this style is distinguished by a, a strumming technique with uh, all five uh, fingers of the right hand strumming in a down-up movement. In uh, 1931, uh, Alexander Zatayevich, anticipating the profound impact on Kazakh music culture of the social change in Soviet Kazakhstan, wrote about Dombrakius that they were under threat of complete elimination. Nevertheless, they did survive. Within the general trend towards adopting standards of Western art music, keys were represented as our symphonies. Uh, this potential was first recognized by the uh, Russian musicologist Boris Asafiev in his article about Kazakh folk music published in 1936, in which he marked out a path for developing the music culture of Kazakhstan. The subsequent fate of Kazakh instrumental music came to be closely connected with the Orchestra of Folk Instruments established in Almaty in 1934, a major enterprise that was to epitomize the music of Soviet Kazakhstan. The bulk of the orchestra's repertoire was drawn from the Western region, first and foremost pieces by the great key master from Bukhe Orda, Kurman Ghazer, uh, whose name was later adopted by the orchestra. A combination of factors determined the foregrounding of the Western Dombra repertoire on the mainstream music scene. The orchestra's founder and artistic director, Ahmed Jubanov, was himself originally from Western Kazakhstan, and in putting together the orchestra's repertoire, he relied on the Dombra music of his region. Uh, the social background of Kurman Ghazer, <coughs> a poor man and opponent uh, of the Tsarist regime, together with the dynamic, life-asserting character of his keys, made his work suitable as a model of national instrumental music. More importantly, however, the sound of Western keys was found to be compatible with Western concepts of music, uh, with a regular rhythmic pulse and heterophonic sound structure um, that could be set in four-part harmony, um, the cues could be uh, readily adapted for the orchestra. Frequently featured in concert programs and broadcasts throughout Kazakhstan, Western cues, uh, notably those by Kurman Ghazer, came to represent a national stylistic idiom, sidelining um, repertoires of various other regional traditions. Um, so this is a photo, this is probably one of the earliest photos of um, the orchestra uh, named after Kurman Ghazer. And I'm showing this um, because from this photo you can see how diverse um, the instrumental repertoire uh, was 
at the time the orchestra was established. So on this photo you can see um, a variety of uh, uh, dombras of uh, different uh, length and shape. Um, here, for example, there's a, an Eastern model uh, with a flat uh, shovel-shaped resonator and uh, with a relatively short neck, which was um, uh, formally fitted with seven to nine threads only. This is also an Eastern uh, model um, of the Dombra. And um, further to the left, um, you see uh, a range of uh, Dombras from the Western region. Um, and again, you can notice that um, they were not at all um, unified in, um, in morphological um, properties, because um, this is, for example, a Dombra which uh, looks very close to the Turkmen Dutar, uh, with a um, round, rounded, uh, pear-shaped, uh, uh, rather narrow resonator, and a long, uh, slender neck. And those Dombras, those two Dombras, for, for instance, they have a larger resonator. So there, there was a variety of instruments, and these instruments were um, were to be standardized as part of a campaign for modernization of Kazakh traditional instruments. And I'm going to play a short fragment of um, uh, a performance by um, a folk orchestra, um, which I filmed um, a few weeks ago. And you can see how um, you know, the look of the orchestra, the, the instruments um, had changed. And the standards and aesthetics of orchestral performance um, influenced solo performance of Dombra Cues. If one compares recordings of Western Cues by masters from the first half of the 20th century with recent renditions of the same Cues, uh, one may notice a change in the sound of the Cues. Those performed by present-day Dombra players are, as a rule, louder, brisker, and more emphatically articulated than those by uh, older masters. While this style of performance of Western uh, repertoire, uh, fixed and perpetuated in notation, came to represent a model of Dombra performance, the repertoire of other regional traditions, notably that of uh, Eastern Kazakhstan, uh, was excluded from the context of professional training and performance um, throughout much of the Soviet period. Uh, in the 1960s, however, on the pages of literally um, journals, a discussion began about the neglect of the Dombra performance tradition of Eastern Kazakhstan. This was spurred by an interview with the Dombra player Abikin Hasenov, a follower of Tetimbet, the acclaimed key master from Arkha, and occurred at a time 
when Kazakh society was experiencing something of a spiritual and cultural reawakening, when the resurgence of interest in Kazakh traditional culture led to an exploration of formerly forgotten musical instruments and forms of performance. This discussion drew public attention to the instrumental legacy of the East. Eastern Dombratui started to be introduced into mainstream music practice, including the Kormankaze orchestral uh, repertoire. Uh, although as yet in a relatively inferior position to the Western key repertoire. It was during this time that the two uh, terms, Tokpia and Sherpia, formally used in the narrow sense of playing techniques, strumming and plucking, uh, typical of the Western and Eastern traditions, were adopted as <coughs> designations of the two styles. Um, just a brief example of um, one of the famous cues by the Timbit in the Sherpia style. So here, instead of uh, strumming the strings with all uh, fingers of his right hand, uh, the performer is plucking them uh, with separate fingers individually. The rediscovery of the Eastern tradition generated a discourse on distinctive qualities of the two regional styles, now associated primarily with the classical works of Kurmangaze and Tatimbet. It is interesting to note how this discourse came to reflect the concepts of Dombra performance that had formed by that time, uh, that is the canonization of the peer, uh, uh, repertoire and uh, Western uh, musical and aesthetic standards. Shirtpiekyis were described in opposition to Tokpie as their other in structural, semantic, and aesthetic terms, 
And um, some of the characteristics assigned to TOCP and CHRP are listed in this table. By contrast to TOCP, CHRP queues were described as smaller pieces covering a narrower pitch range, generally monodic, song-like, as opposed to purely instrumental TOCP queues with an irregular rhythmic pattern. In their scope and form, large-scale TOCP queues were ascribed a symphonic quality while smaller scale shared PQs were compared with chamber music. Uh, in their uh, unfolding of musical time, dramatic talk PQs were perceived as dynamic, progressive, and forward-looking, while shared PQs, described as lyrical and meditative, were seen as static, reflective, and introspective. So as we can see from this um, opposition of um, uh, definitions, um, adjectives ascribed to the two styles. The language uh, which is used um, here is essentially binary um, and uh, divisive. Shirt pay is everything that top pay is not. An important factor that contributed to the perception of shirt pay key, uh, as static was a lack of the structural principle found in a number of top pay cues. Uh, many talk PQs are composed of sections in increasingly higher register zones, alternated with a recurrent low-pitched initial motif. Uh, this structural principle and its corresponding form are known as Bunde from uh, the name of an individual section, uh, Bun. Shared PQs do not normally involve the gradual tonal expansion and intervallic uh, variation typical of Tokpia. Originally intended for a dombra with a smaller compass than the Western Kazakhstan dombra, cues in the Shirpia style develop within a more limited tonal range and can establish the maximum ambitus at the outset. In the local tradition of to uh, Altai, uh, for example, a melody may perpetually revolve within a small range against a bass drum. So such a cue form would be described as static as opposed to a dynamically evolving to PQ in sectional or zonal uh, form. Prior to the 1980s, the depiction of shared pay in oppositional terms in relation to top pay tended to have negative connotations. That is, uh, shared pay had been contrasted with uh, top pay in uh, evaluative terms as simple, underdeveloped, or even primitive uh, in its technical and structural properties. An increasing preoccupation of professional Dombra players with um, the technical aspect of performance, where standards were set by Tokpia, determined a view of Sherpia as an inferior Dombra style. And this perception um, is still uh, perpetuated today by some performance. I came across it when interviewing Kazakh Dombra players from uh, Mongolia, um, uh, where I conducted fieldwork. Their statements about Chirpia were permeated with a defensive or self-defensive tone. One of them, for example, compared the cues of Kurman Gaza and Tati Bet in this way. In terms of its technique, form, and compass, a dai by Kurman Gaza may be finer than a cue by Tati Bet, yet in terms of beauty, lyricism, and wordless expression of the cue's narrative, Chirpia cues are delightful. Another performer underlined the equal aesthetic validity of Sherpia uh, by comparing Kurmagaze to Beethoven and Tatimbe to Schumann or Tchaikovsky. From the 1980s onwards, we can perceive a shift towards more uh, positive uh, understanding of Sherpia as other. Uh, from simple, primitive, outdated, backward, Sherpia comes to be reinterpreted as uh, ancient, deeply rooted, a vestige of past times, an ancient layer of Kazakh instrumental music linking it to the old Turkic uh, music legacy. This new treatment is inspired by studies on the ethnogenesis of the Kazakh people and the early history of Turks. In particular, the development of regional Dambra styles among the Kazakhs has come to be viewed in the context of a historical origination of the Turks in Altai and southern Siberia 
and their subsequent movement uh, uh, spreading westward across Eurasia. Referring to Eastern Asia and Southern Siberia as the proto-homeland of ancient Turks, the Kazakh musicologist Saulia Utigaliva argues that it is the Eastern Turkic peoples, the Hakas, Tuvans, Altais, and their Turkic forebears, who have preserved cultural phenomena which came into being at earlier stages in their evolution and constitute the foundation of the common Turkic legacy. Asiya Muhammadova remarks that traditional music of southern and eastern Kazakhstan has preserved more archaic layers of culture than the repertoire uh, of the western region. Two prominent theories on the historical antiquity of the Eastern Dombra music and performance are espoused by musicologists. One of them argues for an earlier historical origin of the Eastern type of Dombra, uh, uh, called in performance, in traditional performance, uh, milia kalak, which means spoon, uh, which, is, which is referring to its shovel-like shape. Uh, shovel, uh, like shape. Uh, and it's uh, dombra with fewer frets, narrower compass, and a predominantly diatonic scale, which contrasts with the Western dombra's longer neck, wider range, and chromatic scale. Scholars have noted, in particular, a gradual chromatization of the dombra scale from the east towards the west, interpreting it as a sign of their relative historical origins. The other theory considers gradation gradations of Dombra tuning in various local traditions and points to the prevalence of repertoire for a Dombra tuned to a fifth in the eastern region. Among contemporary performers and scholars in Kazakhstan, uh, tuning in fifths is generally regarded as a property of early instrumental music by virtue of the melody drawn arrangement of voices in such cues. Their sound structure is linked to drawn overtone music making and its presumed earlier prototype, throat singing, uh, which is ascribed ancient origins. Um, the links with this music system, which um, Theodore Levin and uh, Valentina Suzuki uh, has called timbre centered music, is thought to be evidence of Shedpe's historical precedence over Tokpe. Um, and it is interesting how this uh, change of um, um, perception, um, you know, view of uh, Sherpia as other uh, in relation to Topia um, has affected um, uh, performance practice. Um, uh, for example, um, if we compare two anthologies of um, CD anthologies of Dombra Cues that um, have been published uh, since Kazakhstan gained its independence in 1991, one um, produced in, uh, in the 1990s, in late 1990s, and the other more recently, then uh, in the first uh, anthology of Dombra Cues, uh, the Cues are ordered from west to east, that is from Kurman uh, to Tatimbet, and then um, also um, a small number of cues from the Altai region. Um, on the other anthology, uh, the cues are ordered in the, uh, in the opposite uh, order, so from east to west, yeah, from Altai to the Urals. Uh, and in the liner notes, the authors of the project explain that this order reflects a historical process in the development of Dombra performance. The evolutionary paradigm inherent in this treatment of regional Dombra styles is rooted in Soviet musicology, in which a historical process was seen as an evolution from simple to complex, from unrefined to refined. In modern discourse on the regional division of Dombra styles, the idea of a presumed antiquity of Sherpia is an expression of cultural nostalgia um, in the times when the early history and culture of the Kazakhs are being reimagined and aspects of Kazakh cultural and national identity reinterpreted or reified. Although recent studies in Kazakhstan have come to undermine certain assumptions relating to the two styles, pointing to a historical uh, heterogeneity of local traditions within the Western and Eastern regions, 
the view that there is an essential difference between Turk peer and shared peer continues to be perpetuated in academic discourse and performance practice. Meanwhile, some writers and musicians uh, have voiced concern about the arbitrary nature of this discrimination, calling instead for a more inclusive understanding of regionalism in Dombra performance. The writer Axileo Seydinbek argues that the Dombra style should be classified according to regional schools or locales, thus underlining links with the wider soundscape of a region, cross links between different forms of music, singing, instrumental, playing, epic performance. He also suggests an alternative typology of keys according to character uh, and ether, ethos rather than playing techniques. One of the types of cues described by him, Kongar, uh, is indeed often referred to by performers themselves, uh, and it is found across various local traditions. An interviewed Dombra tutor at the Almaty Conservatoire, Bilal Skakov, talked of a problematic nature of the emphasis on the technical side in the discrimination between top P and Shert His opinion was that the Dombra player's preoccupation with techniques has diverted their attention from more profound aspects of performance, such as the quality of sound. A conservatoire-trained Dombra player today is supposed to master both styles, and yet neither of them is performed properly because this important aspect of performance is missing. It remains to be seen whether these critical voices will challenge the perception of regionalism and Dombra performance in the future and indeed how it will come to reflect evolving concepts of Kazakh culture and identity. Thank you.